Paul, we're going to jump right in now to what I call my rapid fire questions. Are you ready? I think so. <laughs> when did you first know you wanted to be an attorney? Ugh. I was an engineer before I went to law school. Um, and as I got to my fifth year of uh, uh, school for engineering, I had been doing a work study program and was thinking, I'm not sure if this is for me. I saw it through to my degree, took another year, and at that time I, I thought, well, you know, what's the thing you can do uh, and get right into without any extra education if you want to do something other than engineering? And so the LSAT, you don't have to have any prerequisites for. Right. And so I took it uh, my last year of college and worked a year as an engineer after I got out and decided, no, I really do want to go to law school. Did you hate being an engineer? I didn't like it as much as I do being a lawyer. Right. How about that right. as a diplomatic response? But um, being a, a lawyer to me is so much more rewarding f personally because it allows human interaction in a way that I wasn't getting with my engineering career. No, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Do you have a favorite attorney or a favorite firm to litigate against? Oh, wow. Uh, if I pick one, I'm going to upset the rest of them. Well, I mean, if you want to give me your top three, <laughs> we'll, we will accept that answer. Well, let me, let me think of uh, a couple examples. Um, off camera, we were talking about Jay Edelson. I really, really enjoy um, my cases against his firm um, because, in particular, they're, they're really trying to uh, push some real cutting-edge legal issues. For sure. And uh, so their cases tend to raise some real interesting arguments. Um, uh, there's a whole laundry list of, of very, very good plaintiff's lawyers that I've been up against over the years um, who I've really enjoyed working with. One of the great things about being a class action litigator is that um, our space tends to be pretty civil, and we tend to get along pretty well with our opponents. In your opinion, what has been the biggest change to the clan, class action landscape over the last five years? I would say the, the continuing additional scrutiny that courts are placing on class action settlements. Uh, it's becoming more of a concern for both plaintiffs and defendants. Um, it's causing more cases to be litigated longer than in the past. Um, and I see that trend continuing. No, I agree with you, unfortunately. Um, what's the best legal movie? Uh, to Kill a Mockingbird. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. What's your favorite non-legal movie? Uh, Star Wars. Great answer. We're talking about that off camera as well. <laughs> Do you have a book that you uh, tend to gift to people? Well, this is very self-serving, but um, I edited a book a couple years ago called World Class Actions. And since I have some free copies, I give it to some people from time to time. I uh, notice I haven't received one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've got one in my office. We'll get it to you afterwards. Perfect. What was your least favorite law school class and why? I did not like contracts. Um, and I, to me, it was, I, I don't know what it was. I think it was the 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 amount of structure and the, the lack of kind of flexibility in the law. Um, uh, interestingly, I never thought of myself as being a civil procedure expert, but um, I really did like civil procedure in, in school, which probably makes me odd. Right. What area of uh, class action law do you think is in the biggest growth mode? I would say data breach litigation, privacy litigation are two that are um, very much in growth mode these days. Um, advertising litigation continues to grow. Uh, those are two of the biggest ones. Um, I certainly don't see every aspect of, uh, I do mostly consumer class actions, but in the consumer class action area, those are two big ones. No, I agree with you. I would say that they account for a, an enormous chunk of the settlements that we're administering right now. We're also seeing a broad uptick um, in antitrust settlements, um, but yeah, I agree. Which of the following cases was worst for the plaintiff's bar? Carrera, Concepcion, Dukes, Spokio. Mm, Concepcion. Um, and I say that because it had the effect of eliminating an entire industry, essentially, from what was uh, kind of a hotbed for class action litigation. Um, you used to see all kinds of telecom-related uh, litigation, and uh, it, it, it caused the entire plaintiff's bar to shift to other areas. So it didn't really reduce the amount of class action litigation altogether, but it shifted away from a, really an entire industry. Do you have a particular legal nonprofit that is uh, meaningful to you? I do. Um, I do a lot of work uh, when I'm doing pro bono work, um, not class action work typically for the ACLU of Colorado, um, particularly uh, issues dealing with um, abuse by um, uh, police or um, other government uh, representatives. Uh, we've had a few that were class actions, but mostly individual. So you're filing like Section 1983 claims? That's right. Do you advise the next generation to go to law school and become lawyers? I would. 
Um, there's a famous quote, and I'll butcher it, but one of the former Supreme Court justices said, you know, there's always too many lawyers, but not enough good ones. Um, good this is a good profession for a specific type of person. Um, it's not for everybody. Um, I would not uh, say that people should get into law the way I did, which was as a default because I didn't like something else. Um, but as it turned out, it really was the right profession for me. Um, I really enjoy the, the thinking part, the analytical part, um, but it combines that you know, analytical part with the ability to stand up and um, you know, uh, uh, advocate for a client and also have interpersonal communications and interactions. And, sure. and I like all of those aspects of it. And so, again, it's not for everybody, but for the right person, it's a very rewarding profession and it will continue to be for a long time. Sure. What do you think is the most beautiful courthouse in the United States? Hmm, the most beautiful courthouse. Um, well, I'd like to think that our 10th Circuit Courthouse, which is right across the street, uh, is, is very nice. Um, may not be the most beautiful, but it's the one that comes to mind right now. Right. Right? It's very beautiful. It's got some, it's got some, land, or some uh, uh, rams outside uh, that really get it, kind of give it a western flair. Sure does. I saw it when I was walking up. In closing, uh, if you had a, a poignant piece of advice to impart on the next generation of lawyers, what would that be? I would say... Um, Continue to strive for civility in the profession, um, and to do that despite the pressures you might have from either clients or opponents or judges or anyone else who might influence you. Um, the one thing that we as lawyers can do to improve the quality of the profession and the quality of services that we provide to our clients generally is to do so in a way that's civil to our opponents and the people that we work with. I think that's great advice and a great worldview. Thanks again for being here, Paul. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me.